Welcome into the PHNX Cardinals podcast presented to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top-rated sportsbook. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star wherever you get your podcasts. Johnny Venerable, Bo Brock, Frank Sanders, Damien Anderson at the PHNX Studios in downtown Phoenix. We just got finished watching the Arizona Cardinals get their ass whooped in Mexico City by the San Francisco 49ers by the final score of 38-10. to Why well, can't sugarcoat it, gentlemen? Uh, we were at the halftime report. It was 17 to 10. And then the Cardinals came out and were basically, Bo, run over by Kyle Shanahan on both fronts. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some bad halves of football. That might have been the worst of the season, just completely dominated in every facet of the game. And, you know, the Arizona Cardinals now have given up 30 plus points in, in five games this season. The defense just didn't look like it could hang. Cardinals had a shot coming out of the locker rooms at halftime. And then the Niners immediately, like we said, that kill shot right out of the gates, get on the board, score a touchdown, not just a field goal, a touchdown. They go and then they start to impose their will. There is a big difference of talent out there. Yeah. I mean, obviously, Cardinals dealing with, dealing with a lot of injuries, but there's more to it than that. I mean, the 49ers were way more physical, way more talented today. There is a, a significant difference between the Niners team we saw play this against this Arizona Cardinals team. It was it was brutal. It was there is I'll tell you what, guys. It was more than a quarterback issue today. Yeah, I mean, it was tough to watch from every aspect. I mean, we always talk about getting guys in the right positions and, and able to make plays. And, Bo, you mentioned it, the physicality on the defensive line, getting hits on the quarterback, their ability just to to run the ball. Like, if you look at the, the stats, George Kittle, I think, had over 80 yards and he obviously had the two touchdowns. But it's not like they had a wide receiver with 100-plus yards or a tight end with 100 plus yards, but they did it collectively, and it was a collective ass whooping. And I think that that's you, we wanted to see the, the cards respond in some way, and mm -hmm. you just didn't see that tonight, guys. We said at the half before the halftime show or at the halftime show, it could it could be worse, and it wasn't. Yeah, and then it got, it got worse. worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it got worse. Yeah. And again, back to the point which you made earlier was about the fact that we just got we got a ton of guys that's out talent wise. They just they have more talent than us. Um, and we were hoping for something to some magic to happen, and it didn't. It didn't. It did not happen. We we fought hard for two quarters, and then on the back end, they made a couple of adjustments. But then you're right; they just imposed their will. So, uh, a good good stadium, good atmosphere, good moment for the Cardinals. Embarrassing, definitely was the case on the back end. But you got to go back and say your top tier players wasn't on the field, and all of their top tier players, for the most part, was there. Yeah, I'm not willing to give the Cardinals a pass offensively, but you, you have to look at it. I tweeted it out. They, they're missing seven to eight starters Correct. on offense, including their franchise quarterback, Kyler Murray. But again, I know a lot of people were quick to point out, guys, like the offense wasn't humming when most of those guys were healthy, and I get that. And that's, to me, the, the ownership goes on the defense. If you were going to win this game, this had to be a defensive standout performance by Vance Joseph and company. And while I put a lot of the blame on Vance, I, I look at Steve Kime and I think, you know, you draft for your division. And you drafted Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins back-to-back -to, -back to play and be physical in your division. And tonight, you got your ass kicked up and down the field. The Niners, whenever they wanted to, to the tune of 6.7 yards per carry, mm -hmm. could run the football. And I get it. You know, the defensive line is older, but you never replace Chandler Jones. Your pass rush is completely non-existent. I actually thought the secondary played better than, well, certainly through the first half than, than the numbers would indicate. But man, Bo, I mean, all of our concerns coming into this game, when San Francisco wanted to just line up and play bully football, mm -hmm. they could. Yeah. And they did. Yeah, they certainly did. It was an international incident for the Arizona Cardinals. I yeah. feel like we've had too many of those, right? And in London a couple yeah. of years ago, shut out by the Rams, and now the Niners. I mean, this is... This is a, a strike against the powers that be for the Arizona Cardinals organization that they just couldn't be competitive on a primetime stage. But we, we're asking for a lot, though. Like when you really go back, like when you look at what they what they present and what we're missing, and what we're missing sure. like there's a lot where we are it's asking not a quick for a lot. Fix. And I mean, it's well, if, if our guys are healthy. Then we can we can have this argument from the much, standpoint that, that different? yeah absolutely man you losing you lose three of your offensive linemen you lose your you lose one of your stop one of your your first round draft pick or trade of a receiver you lose your quarterback who's your first they're round actually draft missing pick four starting no linemen you're, you're, you're missing so much so I, I mean these they're not excuses big dog this is it's somebody on the other field that's better than a guy that's on your side. We got we got we got fortunate last week, and we beat a team that was pretty much but, like us. But defensively, I think that what we we've seen glimpses from this defense save this offense or put them in positions 
but to not score to, points. But that second half, I mean, coming out getting that score. But we and knew, I, and, but, I, and I just think, I just think, Frank, that it was just a dominating performance from the line of scrimmage uh, standpoint. I, I agree. Like their ability to run the ball, you know, find the tight ends, all the things that we saw week one with this team with Kansas City, what they were able to do, yeah. run the ball at will, find their, you know, get the ball to, to Kelsey. Tonight it was Kittle, and then it was a host of running backs for and, and, and there wasn't to me it wasn't a any duress with Garoppolo. It seemed like he had a, a lot of time. They they felt comfortable with any play that they called and they were able to move the ball. And, and to me that inability to to get Garoppolo uncomfortable was a, a huge part of this that, hell today. To me that was the game. It was the the 49ers are built off of yak and you've seen it. Garoppolo wins games without throwing touchdown passes. When you give him that kind of time Four today. Well, yeah, right. He hadn't thrown three touchdowns in a game since 2020. And Vance Joseph, I, I love you, my man. That, that was not good enough tonight. Whatever that performance was, you took way too long making adjustments. You never sent people. And if you did, no one got home. You're playing Dennis Gardak against Trent Williams. That's a mismatch. I just, I'm disappointed because I expected the offense to struggle. I know coming into this game, you're missing all these key players and, and you're playing the top defense in the NFL or one of them. I, I thought that the offense was going to have a tough time, but I thought the defense was going to keep them in this game. And the way the second half began, where they came out and literally ran the ball on every single play in route to that Debo Samuel end around, mm -hmm. it was disheartening. I, I tweeted it out. It was soul snatching. And that's where you start to question, especially on this long flight home, like, is this a uh, territory for this team potentially just putting their hands up and said, that's the season because that's the most frustrating part. Well, I, I we got to defer to our guys who, who played the game and played it professionally and for this organization. I mean, at this point, I mean, you guys have, have stared down these, these starts to the season at four and seven before. And after a deflating loss, at what point, you know, does, does this coaching staff lose the confidence and in, in, maybe not the respect, but the confidence uh, of its players? Well, <laughs> You won't lose it because when I look when I look when I look across the room and I say there's Kyler Murray, there's Rodney Hudson, there's this guy, there's this guy, there's this guy, that's not even playing. My best is not even playing yet, and so I'm playing with whatever they whatever I got yeah. in the second uh, yeah. in my locker room. So I I was expecting a lock to come out and try to beat the San Fran 49ers who look like they got most of their weapons and they're ready to go, and so. You don't you don't lose the respect to the locker room because you got players that still got to come and play. Mm -hmm. That if, if if next week after the bye week we get six guys back yeah. and six guys are healthy and then we're getting ready to play the Chargers, what do you say then? So that changes the narrative in this conversation compared to what we saw tonight. This is make no mistake about it. This is exactly what you thought it was going to be. You can have thought everything. No, I, mean, that, I, mean, every, I mean, come on, Frank. You, you, everything even, that everything that was. Their strengths were our weaknesses. Fair Just enough, the but I mean, but the spread was ten at the onset of the game. Yes, it extended, but I mean, the over under was about you know forty three. I think at one point, I mean, it got out of hand. And to me, what was concerning or is concerning was the defense's inability to stop the forty nine er offense. Like to me, like that was huge. And granted, I would have liked to see schematically what they did last week against the Rams offensively. I think that. Uh, Rondell Moore going out early with the groin injury. Didn't I help. think that that caused them problems. But Greg Greg Dortch, shout out to him. I know that we're going to get in get get to him. You know, over 100 yards his first time. I mean, the dude just plays with heart. But mm -hmm. to me, it was just a major piece. And I talked about this every game that has the ability to run the ball and has a great tight end. It's problematic for the Cardinals. And yeah. Johnny, as you mentioned, that second half, they just they didn't even pass. Yeah, it was. Like we're going to hit you in the mouth. It was non-competitive. It was yeah. basically like our bigs are better than your bigs, and it was on both sides of the ball. They sacked Colt McCoy three times. The Cardinals got zero sacks, only had four quarterback hits. I don't even remember them on <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo, and he had 29 pass attempts for the tune of uh, 228 yards, sparkling four touchdowns, but then it was worse on the ground. Christian McCaffrey basically did whatever he wanted, yeah. seven for 39. Yeah. They really didn't lean into him. They... You mentioned it, Bo. They Committee. brought in Elijah Mitchell in the yeah. second half to, to bring the hammer down. Makes me sick having to give Kyle Shanahan so much credit, right? Yeah. I mean, for them to kind of, especially when you talk about uh, where you're playing at, what, 7,200 feet, right? And, and you got the thin air and uh, you got to keep guys fresh. Good job. I mean, he, he knew, yeah. hey, we could we don't even have to run Elijah Mitchell in the first half. We'll keep him fresh and then we'll just wear him down. We'll salt this game away. Yeah. This is this is the brand of football that the Niners want to play and the Arizona Cardinals. They couldn't do anything about it. They just couldn't. And it was that that's disheartening. 
I don't want to bury the lead here too much, but I, I want to get your guys' thoughts as far as who's ultimately to blame for this pitiful performance. When you look at it, we, we just who who do you who comes to your to mind? This is a Steve Kime infrastructure blown game. I mean, this is a foundational problem because you, this is a team that you pit yourself against, and it's a measuring stick, right? And the Niners better than anybody because they are hampered by their quarterback on most Sundays. So you go position by position, 53-man versus 53-man. It's not close right now. Now you can make an argument it's not close because of injuries, but that's part of the game. You pay these guys, you draft these guys to be healthy and to be ready to go on Sunday. So a guy not being available is just as bad as somebody being available not playing well. And then speaking of not playing well, his draft picks, specifically in the first round, Mm. where's the production? Well, I can tell you right now, his last three first-round picks were no-shows tonight. Hollywood Brown literally didn't play because of injury. Right, Zayvon Collins, Isaiah Simmons. Where were they? That's a problem. You guys, killing in the chat. Let's take a look at some of these answers. Cardinals update says Kime is the blame. He didn't equip the coaches with players to compete. Nightingale sunset. Michael Bidwell. He won't let Kime go, and Kime has hired his last three coaches. Guys, Da Frank, you got thoughts on who's to blame for this? <laughs> look, when I look across the field, if I'm I'm DeAndre Hopkins in this in this offense, mm-hmm. yeah. Get me the ball, find ways to get me the ball, and hopefully that, hopefully we can spark something, get some things going. If I got help, that helps. If I got a running back that's trying to put that's putting some stuff down, that's great. Last week game plan was get the ball out of his hands quick. It happened most of the night, but it wasn't enough versus what what the 49ers are bringing. But I will always say this here, because I've learned it for so many times, and you're talking about being embarrassed, is when you don't have your players, the best of your players versus their players, they're going to enforce their will. They're going to do what they're supposed to do. D.A. said it, and you guys said it absolutely perfect. There was nothing we could do offensively or defensively to stop what they were doing. The 49ers came with one intent. That's to put, put enforce their will and to walk away with a dub, and they did that. Who to blame? Do I go to Steve Kahn? I like what Johnny is saying mm-hmm. in, in regards to the fact that the backups and the, and the guys that should be there playing, they're not playing. Why yeah. they're not playing, I don't know. Did we get them when they were older? Did we get them when we got we got nicks and bruises on guys and we knew that already? And we brought him in to kind of do some band-aid, some bandage work, then that's probably what we got. But physically tonight, we got out coached and we and they had better players than us. But guys, optics are everything. And anytime that you go in international, Monday night football, fans don't necessarily care about Great. the fact that you have maybe seven, eight starters out. They want to see a team be competitive. They want to have a reason to cheer and they want to be able to support and feel good about it, right? So when you're evaluating the team, you're looking at, hey, did they have all the players that they need to be successful? Yeah, that's Steve Kime's job. And were they could they be effective on the football field? That's Cliff Kingsbury and Vance Joseph's job. And this season, I would say as a whole, you know, they've taken L's in all those categories. The the broadcast said they've taken a huge step back. this year. They've taken a step back because the expectations with the money's invested in this football team were, were for this offense to be high powered and the defense just be adequate. Yeah. yeah, and they've relied heavily on this defense. All their, I'd say, uh, po- you know, uh, you, their Achilles' heel mm-hmm. were exposed today. You know, yeah. Frank, and you Very, know I that. Agree. I agree. Anytime that I you agree. play, it, th- this game will expose you. If you play long enough, this game will expose you. And unfortunately, that's what happened tonight, guys, with the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, you are what your record is, and at this point, the Cardinals are four and seven. I I gotta fall, throw some blame most of the on today's game, mostly on Vance Joseph. Yeah. I think that there was opportunity there. Like, you say what you will. I mean, the final score, you'll say, oh, they never had a chance. Quarter, quarter this, this, this was a this was a one-score game going into, into the locker room. This team needed to come out and at least hold them out of the end zone. They couldn't do so. I mean, they just – I mean, was he, they, should, they should have been fresh coming but, out of the locker room. But that seemed so long ago. It did. You know it what I mean? That seemed a, so – Yeah, that like, was what a, game, like, That seemed like a whole other game. You know what I mean? In comparison to the second half and what happened, happened, it was like, you know, like you said, there was, it wasn't bad. You know, everybody was optimistic. You felt good about it. And then the second half happened. We're like, dear. 38 points. Basically the start of the And they're just running the ball. Yeah. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. Kittle had, Kittle's Kittle. But I mean, they were, like you said, I mean, just running the ball at will. So I, I don't know. I mean, they have, let's be fair to Vance real quick. Their defensive line group is amongst the worst in the NFL. I, you know, they're they're signing practice squad level guys to key roles. Michael Dogby and Ledbetter right. and Hill. And that's who they're counting on at defensive tackle. Watt and Zach Allen can only do so much for that group. And then they they didn't replace Chandler Jones. 
Like they, we like Cameron Thomas, Maze Sanders. They're third round rookies. Like they shouldn't be put in this situation. Dennis Gardeck got a new contract. I would argue that's been a disaster. Marcus Golden got it an extension. He has been having his worst NFL season since his rookie season, probably in 2015. That group has let the team down, as has the middle of the defense. And then at the end of the day, like the root problems, you can go to the two inside linebackers. Like I know they've had some good games. I'm still high on them long term. But Simmons and Collins, like you watch Fred Warner. We talked about it. Man. Steve Kime would would die for Fred Warner. I think everybody <laughs> and, in the NFL would. Yeah, and they get him in the third round. The Cardinals use consecutive top 15 picks, top yeah. 16 picks on linebackers that aren't close to Fred Warner's level. I that's mean, a problem. Yeah, you look at the draft capital that's been invested on both the offense and defensive fronts for for San Francisco, and you look at the you know the, the counterparts for the Arizona Cardinals, and it's not there. Like yeah. the first and second rounders that they've utilized versus what Kime is not utilized. It's 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 very telling. Look, it's it, telling. I mean, you, especially on the offensive line, are we shocked that Rodney Hudson at 33 years old is not available right now? Yeah. Justin Pugh with his injury history, his age, that he's not available right now. I mean, it's. It's not. You yeah, shouldn't be surprised. Yeah, that's why we can't use injuries. I mean, with, with all those injuries, are are we disrespecting the 49ers in that Garoppolo has been to a Super Bowl? He's been to an NFC, you know, championship game. You know, they do have Nick Bosa. They do but have the number my, one. Here's my know, pushback, though, DA. It was the Niners last year. So, right. and Went then they got run over by Seattle, and they got swept by Seattle this year. Yeah, they beat the Rams in a basically a meaningless game with a backup quarterback. You're getting your ass kicked. Almost every time you play that, an Johnny. NFC West team right now, I agree with that. they have lost. Listen to this. This is a stat on Twitter from my uh, guy, Blake Murphy. In their last 17 games, the Cardinals are 5-12. and 12. That includes wins against the Cowboys, but also the Panthers, a Rams backup quarterback, the Raiders, and Andy Dalton-led Saints. You, I mean, you're not only bad in the NFC West, you're bad in the NFC. You're not winning games, period. Bad that, just the NFL. Yes, in the NFL, period. <laughs> and I, I just think it's, yeah, I'll give San Francisco their due. They look like one of the best teams in the league, top team in the NFC. Mm-hmm. But, like, when is it going to be our turn? We watched Seattle go through it in their dynasty <laughs> with Russell Wilson. And then the Rams win a flipping Super Bowl. <laughs> and then the Niners are now the, da- the darling of the division. The Cardinals were 10 and 2 Tell last year not. and still win the division. <laughs> when is it? It's time for me to laugh when you want to cry. You got to laugh when you want to cry. It should be rotated. That's the NFL is built on parity. It's cyclical, right? One team goes up, one team but goes down. But this is a year for the Cardinals. Doing this. And now we're in the we're in the back in the shitter. We're hey, in the look, gutter. They, literally on television night, they talked about Lynch and the mind he has right now, as him being a general manager in the league and what he's been able to do and put together. The formula he's put together and the guys that he's brought in, it's working. And the guys are buying in for whatever it's costing him and whatever it's taking his team to do it. At the end of the day, everyone's on a one year contract trying to win a Super Bowl or win a championship. We're not at that place right now. No. There's, a, there's a lot of things that's going wrong that has been going on conversation wise from this offseason until now. And it's showing up right now in in live time, real battle shit. And so that's just what it is right now. So we gotta figure it out. But congratulations. I mean, hey, to all the guys that's in the chat that's the 49er yeah. fans that's that's chiming in oh, no. and supporting your team. Look, you whooped the ass tonight. And it was a good whooping. And then guess what? <laughs> we gotta figure it out. And when we figure it out, guess what? We'll be owning your ass again. <laughs> uh, Matthew, thank you for the four ninety nine Super Chat. This front seven is a glaring weakness, but I'm going to give you a bigger weakness right now. This franchise, this offseason, sent a message to their fan base by doing three things. They signed their coach, they signed their GM, they signed their quarterback, boom, 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 to extensions right now. Like it or not, before this game and now afterwards, we have questions about all of them. Now, some are more extreme than others, but you got people – Dogging Kyler Murray nationally, locally, and now you've got everybody again clamoring for Kime and Cliff to be fired. That's the problem with this team. And then everything is cyclical. Everything comes down from there. And, uh, you know, the the robust line on DraftKings reflected that before the game tonight. You could get live odds mine up to almost minus 20 on DraftKings, San Francisco 49ers. I hope you chose to bet on the NBA instead. You can utilize the DraftKings Sportsbook app. New customers can make any $5 NBA Moneyline bet. Get $200 back if your team wins. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use that promo code PHNX. That's PHNX, promo code at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for details. I had a rough time watching the game tonight. It was fun hanging out with the boys, producer Emma, the whole PHNX crew. Uh, earlier today, a lot better time out at Four Peaks. I was at the uh, U.S. 
World Cup match that was going on against Wales. They played to a draw, 1-1 draw, and it was electric inside of Four Peaks. The drink specials were flowing. The food was great. The atmosphere was even better, and it continues tomorrow because we got a watch party for every U.S. match and every Mexico match. And yes. Mexico kicks off their World Cup tomorrow Tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., it's like kegs and eggs over at Four Peaks. Get yourself in on that. You can register in the show notes right now. Tomorrow at 8 a.m., you can get delicious breakfast buffet. We got you handled as far as what's for breakfast, drink specials, and appearance by rising head coach Juan Guerra. He's going to be joining us, hanging out, saying hi to people, talking about what's going on with the rising and breaking down the match. Buy your tickets in the description. Hang out with us. If it's not tomorrow, join us Friday and the rest of the World Cup. We got those viewing parties going on, at least for this first match and probably beyond because it's such a smashing success. I will say, though, register. I got there. I had my seat there. The The parking was all the way at the end of the street. Get in. Get Register now. Get in there. Get your seat today because you'll regret it if you don't. Man, I would much rather be at Four Peaks tomorrow watching uh, the World Cup than in Mexico City tonight watching this team get their ass mm-hmm. kicked. So if you're tuning in from Mexico City, God bless you. Supporting the Cardinals. Cardinals got a big game on Sunday against the Chargers. And that's kind of where I want to turn to while contextualizing it for this, for where we're at right now. Like, because we're about to enter no man's land as Frank goes into another dimension. <laughs> Mike, um, Mike Robinson, on a positive note, the Cardinals <laughs> merch for the holiday shopping season will be a, a higher <laughs> discount on the clearance rack. Make sure you go to PHNX first. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. We got promo codes. Locker. We got, we got yeah, good stuff. We're going to talk team. about that here in a little bit. Become a diehard. We're gonna, yeah, we'll get to sure. that. Hell mm-hmm. yeah, my man. Uh, where do the Cardinals go from here? Because like we don't know who's going to play quarterback on Sunday. Um, we don't know what their long-term plan is for this season or after this season. We don't know if Cliff Kingsbury and Steve Keim are safe. Like, Bo, like, when Cliff Kingsbury speaks to the media, not only tonight but tomorrow, like, what do we what do we take for a grain of salt? What do you take seriously from Cliff at this uh, point? You get your bingo card out tomorrow. Yeah. He's got all the you know, stock answers, and, mm-hmm. and that's just how Cliff operates, and you should know that by now. And don't expect anything, you know, too telling, too transparent about yeah. the state of the franchise. But I, you know, you know that he knows this organization's in, in a tough spot right now. And at yeah. four and seven, when you're staring down Justin Herbert, guy, the next guy who's going to get paid as far as quarterbacks go, and a Chargers team that's going to be fighting for their lives, I, I think now if. We see Kyler Murray. We saw the video today before the game, pregame. He's running sprints full speed. I saw him running on the sideline at practice on Friday. Mm -hmm. So he's getting healthier. If he's good to go, I think you put Kyler back in that situation. And you say, whoa, 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 we've got four or five offensive linemen out. No, the only way that things get better and the the only way that you don't lose a locker room, you don't lose a fan base any more so than you already have, you got to get your guy out there and you got to get a win at home. For sure. And it, I mean, everything starts with Kyler. I mean, we 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 saw the chat, you know, we talked about Colt after last game and, you know, everybody was riding high and we saw tonight and I don't put it all on Colt. I feel like it was a combination of things. But with Kyler out there, he, you know, he could mitigate some of the, the issues with the offensive line. And he's the reason why they gave him over two hundred million dollars. Yeah. And you want to see him play in. All, to all Bo, Bo's points, I think that Kyler gives his team the best chance to win. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a problem going against the Chargers and how they played against you know mm-hmm. how they just played against the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. So and they're a, a well tooled offensive machine that can pass and run you know run the football. So it's gonna be a great <clears throat> excuse me. It's gonna be a great test, guys. But with with all this going on, I think what, what I'm most looking forward to is the dramatic display of imagery and music that they associate with hard knocks yeah because that'll be entertaining regardless <laughs> you know what i mean like the game wasn't yeah. but you know we could all you know get together i know that you guys have a post game you know show where you guys mm-hmm. discuss it. you guys do an amazing job but Thanks. like that's that's kind of what i'm you know i mean i don't even want to see the game no more i just want to see how they you know they demonstrate them you know what i mean on hard knocks and see you guys talk about it and check out check out your retweets <laughs> and stuff like that this team is going to need what they've been needing most of the season is leadership. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They don't need someone to keep talking, keep 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 inspiring, keep trying to believe in where this team is trying to go. L- last year we talked about and we sat down with Christian Christian Kirk and it was really about the standard and setting the standard and developing a standard and becoming the standard in in, a, in an, you know in an FC division. And so we were fighting for that. Guys are averaging almost 30 points a game and then it went bad. So here here's here's where we are right now. 
the veterans still got to stand up. They still got to believe that the guys that are hurt since they're not on since they're not on IR full season, you're believing these guys to come back. And so since we're believing these guys come back, we got to trust that when they come back, they're going to be a major part to us finishing the season. Again, you talk about optics all the time, how fans want to feel. You win the last three games of the season or you win the next next four or five games. It changes the narrative. It changes the conversation. For sure. We'll lick our wounds. But tonight was definitely a display that team. A team was better. They they put they enforced their will. First half was one half, but the second half, their their veterans, their their will was imposed on ours. Their so, physicality. Yes. But Johnny, I think we got a super chat. Did you we see do, that? Yeah, yeah. Any chance this is good. Uh from Mr. Grimm, thank you for the ten dollars, by the way. Uh any chance that Cliff gets fired on hard knocks uh mm. and has to turn in his playbook. Uh, hey, Cliff, bring your playbook. Michael wants to talk a la training camp. I don't think that mm. is likely. We're going to be fired, though. We're, we're going to talk about Cliff Kingsbury, the odds. I know <laughs> no we had odds intended, uh, odds questions on. I mean, listen, I, I would still believe that he, among among Nathaniel Ta- Hackett, is the next NFL coach to be fired, according to Vegas. Yeah. We thought he bought him so- time some last week. I was of the mindset. I know you were, too. He won tonight. I think he would have been safe. Now, does he finish the season five or six wins? We don't know. What we do know is DraftKings King of the Game was on full display tonight, gentlemen. I think this is an easy one to guess. He went in for the injury for Rondell Moore. It was Greg Dorch for the tune. Yes. Nine catches, 103 receiving yards. Bo, how about the undrafted free agent stepping up when so few of his team members did? I mean, this is a guy that's answered the call all season long. He's been kind of set aside and afterthought. <laughs> did he didn't deserve to be benched? He didn't deserve to lose playing time. What are we laughing at, folks? <laughs> Johnny, my Johnny. allergies are out of control. Johnny, I tried to blow my nose <laughs> when Emma had the graphic up. She tried to catch yeah. me. She didn't get me. Well, let's, let's talk continue. about better things. <laughs> well, more better performance from Greg Dorch. <laughs> He go, you know, Rondell Moore goes down on the first play of the game, yeah. and then Greg Dorch immediately finds himself back on the field, a place he should have never left, and saw limited sta- snaps on for this offense. Uh, great to see him kind of get that that little pelt for himself to put on mm-hmm. his wall. Hundred yep. yard uh, receiving yeah. game, guys. I mean, that's against that's a good legit. Defense. Yeah, against that's a good, legit. Yeah, gets a good defense, and I think you know, I think we figured out was it Johnny Bo? You guys uh, did the math on it. Was like the longest play of the year for the Arizona Cardinals. It so was that, to have it from a player. Johnny, as you mentioned, being a, a free agent, you know, you just know that he's a grinder. His story and how he's played every chance that he's gotten the football. I mean, he's a, he's an impact player. And, I, you know, you wish that the Cardinals, you know, had more players like that. And, and, I mean, every time that they step on the football field, something great happens. I mean, we know the name of the game. You know, money is power and influence and guys are going to play. But, you know, Rondell Moore going down, you know, one man trash is, or to an injury is another man's treasure. So... So, so to see uh, GD get out there and get over 100 yeah. yards and make plays was was great. Look, so true, how is it, DA, when, when people are laughing when you're making a point because of something somebody said in the chat, our guy so, Tree saying? He's not our guy. He's the, <laughs> he's the opposite of our guy. Listen, <laughs> seasonal allergies are the real thing. I took my Allegra before the show. It's wearing off. But, Frank, let me get your take on this. I'm frustrated with Rondell Moore, okay. the glass man, as we call him. Uh, multiple lower body injuries since the, really 2018, 2019 at Purdue. Is, is he a lost cause? Because I think anytime we want to wrap our arms around little Rondell after last week's big game, right? He makes the, the game winning <clears throat> catch against the Rams, the fade on fourth and three this week. First play. Now, granted, it was a terrible call from Cliff. End around sweep, minus six yards. Boom, immediately leaves the game with a lower body injury. Can you trust him moving forward? This is what you can trust. If on Tuesday the Cardinals do not re-sign Gregory Dorsch to a three-year contract <laughs> worth four point something to three point something million dollars, then yeah, then I'm out. And I'm this is me saying about Gregory Dorsch, and I'm yeah. saying that respectfully. Like I'm not signing with you guys next year. I'm not even coming to camp. So you can watch whatever contract you got with me because I'm balling and I'm balling the f out, and y'all know it. And back to your point with Rondell Moore, <clears throat> he's your draft pick, and look at him. But when I get in the game, look at me. And so that's just, that's optics, that's on the field. That's everyone that's in the chat. And and it's it's going to be a natural comparison, guys. Correct. Because they both play the same position. Correct. And they're both being, you know, productive. One's healthy. So people are going to start. I know that we, you know. Doesn't Rondell or Greg look more natural, though, as a pass catcher? Doesn't he look more natural running routes downfield? I mean, he's just a good player. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he, I mean, in, in, in comparison, you know, he stays healthy. He's durable. Yeah. He's made. He's found a way to stay around. And Rondell, I think that you see the ability there, but we haven't seen it consistently, and I think that's what fans get frustrated right. about. 
Johnny, that's why you, you know, turn around, rip your hat up and bang Whoa. on the couch. When you, I literally turned around and I missed Rondell's only play of the game. So, I mean, I'm like, shit, Rondell. We were all we spent a whole segment this week talking about fans get frustrated about that, point. man. When they can't depend on another you, time draft pick, yeah, let's, they, when let's they can't our, de- depend on a guy to make yeah. plays, and I mean, it just sucks. That's why Gregory needs a contract. If I don't get a contract in the next two weeks, I'm telling you, isn't it ironic? He's a bright though, spot, but he's, he's a bright he's spot. He's a bright spot right now that's been basically set dormant. Until he gets a chance to go do what he needs to do, and yeah, I, think I love that's you, my man. Special. In the chat, I disagree with you. He was hurt at Purdue. Like he's he's just he's a hurt player. Hurt players stay hurt. Hurt in college. Hurt in the pros. All those things are reigning true. Would he made a difference today? No, no. But Rondell? I just, I think yeah, Rondell. Yeah, because I don't think he has. Yeah, I think he makes a difference. I mean, especially with with DeAndre Hopkins operating at the level he was in the first half. I think Rondell Moore would have certainly made a. Uh, the, the offense would have lo- looked a lot more efficient in the first half than it did. Well, and he, you know, Greg and, and Colt were on the same page. So, yeah, you're probably from an efficiency standpoint. But, like, can, can we just – can we talk about the fact that, like, Greg Dorch is is more productive than a lot of Steve Kimes drafted receivers? Yeah. Hakeem Butler and Andy Isabella. And now, you know, Rondell Moore can't stay healthy. It's like what we said at the beginning of the season, Bo. Like, I, I am very tempted if I would – in charge of the Cardinals running the team, like – Rondell, you can't play and you can't be embedded in our offensive scheme and be atop the depth chart with D Hop and everybody else until you can show you you can stay healthy. It'd be interesting that we'll never know this if if the Eno Benjamin argument, you know, obviously losing all of his playing time to James Conner coming back and being full health and, and what they needed to do against the Rams. If if there's a frustration of the guys that. We're there for every single workout this offseason. Guys that excelled in training camp, mm-hmm. that made their case for jobs, got opportunities, mm. have done well in those spots, and then continue to have to take a back seat to guys who either make more money than them or yeah. that were drafted higher than them. I mean, there's got to be a certain <laughs> level of frustration in that locker room. I always that. say this here, and I had to learn this as a player, and Damien is definitely one of the guys that had to experience this from a different perspective. We might sign and bring a lot of good players here, but you really can't tell them how good they really are because they don't get the reps because when you're losing. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you you then you then management tends to focus on the guys that's getting the money and yeah. guys that either were drafted or free agents and came in at different times, you don't get to see those guys. And so Gregory is just a, a byproduct of that when you got an A.J. Green making his bread and you got other guys that's making the money. Gregory's door, he's that. But we've all seen what he's able to do and what he's able to bring to the table. But they got to put the guy in with the money. And so I think that's... That's that's that CYA process of being a general manager and all of the guys that's on board. Even Coach Sean Jefferson, who's the receivers coach, has to make a decision in that moment. He knows what he has in Gregory Dorch, and it's sad. And that to make to a point, would it made a difference? Well, Gregory Dorch played the whole game, Got except it. one play. So in, that's in the, that's what in it the was. NFL. There's a thing. I mean, it, I'm making this word up, but it's called salary bias. Like if you mm-hmm. make that bread, yeah. you're gonna play. Yeah, and that's they're true. gonna give you every opportunity to do so until. The person at your position gets hurt, and I mean it's just an. Un- it's I think it's, it's it unfortunate, is. but it's be- it's great for Greg because he's been able to get on the field mm-hmm. and make the most out of it. Yeah. It sucks because they're not winning. So the car, I mean, it, the optics of it, they're like, yeah, whatever. Because we need to figure out how do we stop the run, how do we stop tight ends, <laughs> yeah. how do we find matchups, and how do we protect our quarterbacks. I mean, that's just one of the that's problems, nice. right? Like that's just one of the problems. It's not you know, the major one. I mean, we're talking about Greg Dortch and Rondell Moore. Yeah, sure. We wish Rondell Moore was healthy. Greg Dortch is playing awesome. Hopefully he gets paid his, you know, his future secure. But the Cardinals have a lot more issues, Bo, than just who's going to be the number two receiver. That's true. Right. Absolutely. We got a super chat. Brian Abdallah, he's saying uh, Kyler does not start next week. He's soft. Just a statement, I'm not a question. Hey, hey, yeah, respect your opinion, man. I'm not gonna call him soft, but I'm gonna be frustrated by it because I don't want to watch Colt McCoy anymore. He has a bye week, so he he should be able. To, he has a bye the week. Following week. week. The was, following week. Oh, the wow. following. They play the Chargers. <laughs> well, no, no, Sunday. He, he should be fine. Though. We just saw him running four two. Hey, <laughs> hell yeah, man! But like, you're at State Farm Stadium. You're on your grass. You're not playing away. Like there was some talk. Like maybe they didn't want to play Kyler on the on the turf in Mexico City. Like I can buy that. Plus it was raining. Like you're inside against you know a feller fellow uh, warm weather team and like if the Cardinals think they're going to keep up with Justin Herbert with Colt McCoy I'm sorry it's just and then the Cardinals defense the state of it like your best bet to win this game Sunday is a shootout and the only way you're going to win one of those is with with K1 and if K1 can't play I, I don't know where you go from here because again I agree with you Brad it's not Colt's fault but Colt was billed like we saw last year 
to win with defense and a run game, work off a of play action, make the plays that were there. But then I think we saw it when he tried to scramble out of the pocket. It was laughable. And that's a play a lot of us take for granted with K-1's mobility. Yeah. I, I had to get on the phone tonight and report to the police several murders that I watched. <laughs> one Christ. was the Diners murdering the Arizona Cardinals. <laughs> Next one was Johnny's allergies murdering him right here on the set. Here at PHNX. And the third. Well, we know Allegra's out 24 hours. I know that. The third it's was my be. thirst. Thanks to our friends over at Liquid Death. I like that. We were killing the third game. Absolutely. <laughs> Not beers and cans. They look like beers. They're, they're in the tall boys. So you look fly drinking them. But you're also you're hydrating yourself. It's, it's mountain spring water from the Alps. Or if you're a sparkling water. Uh, person out there they've got the different flavored sparkling waters i saw somebody did a taste test of it so you know our friends over at liquid death are doing it right it's called liquid death because it murders your thirst and they also murder and kill plastic pollution was a great cause they donate 10 percent of their profits sold to kill plastic pollution you can get free shipping on all water some sweet merch that they have t-shirts i'm sure they got some other stuff out there you got to check it out liquiddeath.com slash phnx check out all their water and merch at liquiddeath.com slash phnx you can find liquid death near you it's just at your neighborhood fries you can find it at target as well or sprouts you can find some liquid death there you know it's frustrating because i i watched this game and it was brutal but i got to do at least with more furniture mm -hmm. uh spruce up your home with more furniture's fall sale at morefurniture.com you're going to get a gift card a hundred dollars for every thousand dollars you spend if you see the gear here at phnx programming you know it comes from more furniture and at least we're comfortable while we're getting our teeth kicked in watching this this arizona cardinal team again more furniture at morefurniture.com tons of sales Tons of quality merchandise that you can't get anywhere else. If you want premium furniture, you know where to go. It's morefurniture.com. All right, gentlemen, looking at the schedule the rest of the season, we're going to play a little projection because I, I frankly can't talk anymore about this game. It makes me sad. It hurts me. Uh, so the Cardinals play the Chargers and they get a bye. Patriots, Broncos, Bucks, Falcons, 49ers, Bo. How many more games do you think the Cardinals Man. win the rest of the year? If you're putting the over under and I said two and a half, you're taking the over under um, wins. Probably the under. Taking the I think, under two I think and a half. Two, wins. two more wins feels about right. I think that's ballpark right now. Johnny, can you I forgot the names that you mentioned? Okay. <laughs> they play the Chargers this weekend, then the bye. Then okay. Patriots, Broncos, Bucks, Falcons, 49ers. You said Broncos? At Denver, though. Yeah. I'm gonna they're gonna win the bye. Uh, that does and, not count. You can't lose, yeah. And beat the Broncos. Oh my god! So one win. How many? How many you got, Frank Sanders? Frankie, just flip a coin. I'm Chargers, a, I'm a Patriots, Look. Broncos, Bucks, Falcons, Niners. Six left. I, I, let, let me go back Falcons here. I think. Do. I think that's it. In so, Atlanta, though. If the buy is helpful for us to get healthy, and we can get, we're going to get your boy Hollywood back. D Hobson probably get healthier. We can get Kyler back. Maybe get an offensive lineman, one or two or three of those guys back. That'll mm -hmm. help on our offensive line. Brad in the chat talked about a little earlier how was our, our offensive line was terrible. It absolutely was. So yeah. we we need we need better guys right now to kind of really we need our we need our experienced guys to come in and be who they're supposed to be. Um I, I could almost I can almost see four. I'm not I'm going with the over Damn. on that because Damn. I think that look. We got young dogs and guys that's gonna finish the season defensively. These Buddha's not gonna let us down on defense. So, and JJ. so, so Frank, you think that the team is gonna get together, be able to stop the run, tight ends, the pass, <laughs> and also protect the quarterback? Well, they're not going up against and, the Niners and, and run an offensive efficiently. I'm hoping that we could. I'm hoping that. I mean, with, I hope with, so too. I'm saying, but I'm hoping with Kyler, we become more efficient, and we have and we have Brown, Dorch, if your boy Hudno come back, and then we can we can develop our offense and get just a little bit more protection on the offensive side. Defensive wise, I don't think our defense is ever gonna give up and quit. Tonight they met it tonight, and again we still got that same problem. But hopefully we can figure some things out as the season progresses. This is a long season, and so that bye week could mean a lot for us getting moving forward into the in the progression of where we want to be. Johnny, there's a there's a there's a couple questions here. Let, let's say this. What's there's a couple magic numbers I want. And I want the chat to interact with this. What's the win total that gets Cliff fired? Oh, and what's the, what's the win total that keeps Cliff around? I, I think the win total that gets Cliff fired is probably for sure five. You mm -hmm. lose five games, or you win five games, you lose 12. Like that's 12 losses in any stretch is bad. And, and I think the optics of how you lose them 
Like, tonight wasn't just a loss. This was an embarrassing loss on national TV in Mexico City on a home game, right? Like, you lose at home on Christmas to, ta- to Todd Bowles. Let's say they're shut out that game. They lose, like, 27 nothing. I, I think that that— That's how I feel. Just see that look on DA face. I, I'm telling that's you right now, that, that's, that, that's more it's than just hurt. the wins Tom and the Brady? losses. Got to be, bro. Tom Brady. Got to be. They're playing better. I think to get, I think where he's Sheesh. safe and Jackson just said it, they get to seven and 10 and they feel like, yeah, once upon a time it was seven and nine. You didn't want double digit losses. You don't want any losses, but double digit losses. I think seven wins, they can make enough excuses with the state of the roster injuries that they can say three more Agreed. dubs. They beat Broncos, the Falcons. They find the, I mean, you'd have to beat the Patriots or the Chargers because I don't think you're beating the Niners or Tampa. It's going to be difficult, but I think seven Wait, saves hold on. It. they got to play 49ers again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In a game at the end yeah. of the year. Yeah. Heard that, right? that mean, that They're going to sit everybody right? there. They're gonna, the 49ers will sit everybody yeah. by the time. No, I, I don't think so because I think they're they're seven and five right now, six yeah. and five. They, they got like, they they to win games too. to win right. the division. They do. Yeah. They do. Um, they're six and, four, six and four. Six and four? Yeah, six and four. So, and they're, they're chasing Seattle. Seattle's rest of the season their their schedule well, without the NFC is too i mean you could be up for a bye i mean as bad as it's been yeah. if, if you if you basically not win out but if you lose one more you're you're in you're in contention for that yeah guys i i, I want to throw this to the chat throw this out to you guys real quick too what do you think went wrong like with, with the expectations of this team like right. what do you think too like, too inactive in the off season did not make upgrades no pass rush they did not draft and develop interior offensive linemen. And then I think the well, biggest issue, I mean, can we, Cliff Kingsbury has not improved. And then thus, Kyler Murray hasn't improved. Yeah, the offense was the biggest issue for the first nine weeks of the season. I mean, we saw, you know, a half here, quarter there. The, the slow starts were devastating. They were team. unwatchable. They, they couldn't get, they, could, they, they haven't played with a lead for barely, I mean, the majority of the season they've been chasing points. So it's you know whatever what was, they did in the offseason the, the, was the, the most mistake. money that they've spent uh, as far as their cap, as far as their draft capital, as far as their coaching staff. The offensive side of the football has been a failure this season. No, it has been. Um, I agree with everything Johnny said. Bottom line, it's yeah. been it's been that bad the offseason of not upgrading and bringing in um, experience and and. and well, some, we talked some, about that need, Frank, and, maybe and, for defensively, and we we did but offensively. They like loaded he, up. No, 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 no. They loaded but up. But he didn't because offensive line-wise, we begged two guys that was in retirement it's to come great, out. That's a great point. Great point. And then now we got to go pick – we got to go pick up, you know, kitty dirt, litter from a – Dirt, from skirt, a, yeah. Right. From, from Street all free guys, agents, from all guys, practice so. squad guys. guys. They're players. Yes. They're yeah. players. They get paid. No, they, they get they're paid all players. And they, they're players, but they're, that, they're backup. Fair. And so that's just the bad part. Like, if we don't – if we don't really go out and – at this time right now in the NFL, there's so much money in the salary cap that you just need to spend the money and go get the players if you really want to win to add to the players you already got. Right when now. you look at our names, you say you have Ertz, you have Hops, you have Brown, you have Murray. There is no effing way that anybody in the NFL shouldn't want to be here offensively. Then you go defense. You got your boy Thompson. You got Buddha. You got you. I, I'm not even talking about, you got Buddha. You got JJ. And then you can say, man, hell, I could be a piece that can make this team. But if you look at the spectrum of what's going on in our division by itself, the only team that really made move was the 49ers. And nobody else has done that. And they didn't or match, even need to. And match, and match that. And, and so, they didn't even need to. And they didn't need to, but they did. And so that's when you look at it from that position. And even in the locker room, be like, man, shit, I got Hobbs. I got my man. I got AJ. I got – I, 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 I just got to do my job. We're going to ball if Kyler stays healthy, but we don't have no offense line. Then defense. We don't have no defense line to put pressure. Then we got two young – we got two young linebackers that we could have went out and got guys – that just on the defensive side of the ball, if we just was willing to be aggressive, we could have added some weight to our defense, and we oh, and no. we did and we did none of that. There's some good comments here. I want to get to them. Um, B second round Trey McBride. I think it's too early on Trey, but I get where you're going. I second agree round with Andy Isabella. Second round Rondell Moore. I mean, th- three second rounders, zero impact tonight. A- not, absolutely none. Not, not great. Mm. Uh, I like Howard had a good comment above too. Is they need to draft and develop offensive defensive linemen. Like the game is won, quarterback play yes, but line of scrimmage. Cardinals suck at the line of scrimmage. They're not any good at it. They've gone out and tried to buy offensive linemen mm-hmm. who get hurt now. And then on the flip side, like what was supposed to be like the leadership missing piece, but now like when you're talking about well JJ Watt is our best player in our front seven, yikes. That's a <laughs> that's a problem when he's like a year away from retirement potentially. 
that's an issue that st- stems Bo from draft and develop. Yeah, I mean, and you you know you couldn't get Hollywood out there. There's your first round pick from this year. I mean, you just have all these assets that you you're equipped with in the off season, and yeah. you're just. You're not getting guys out there on the field that can make an impact, and you see it around the like the frustration for this for this fan base is you see it the 31 other teams around the league they get they get uh, performances from guys in their first year uh, big time performances you see yeah. them every prime time game whether it's the Chiefs or the Chargers or the Niners I mean and, but the Arizona Cardinals for whatever yeah. reason are different and they'll they'll make a case for why it's different but it it doesn't lead to success Some, something about our organization and I'll go back to my day and time that it's still it's still lingering and it's just it is what it is and yeah. as, a, as a cardinal fan as a former cardinal player something lingering that's that's not just from the head you need an aggressive person like a ba that can mm. fight off and ward off and, and, and empower these guys to go out and want to play for whatever's whatever's taking place i'm not saying cliff's not that guy but i'm it's showing that he's not that same guy and for whatever reason that is uh, but you can watch guys leave here. And Chandler Jones is the only one that recently I can speak to right now that is not living up to the, the formula that is when they left, they went on and been better. Or they've gotten in better places. Christian Kirk is doing absolutely well over in Jacksonville. Chase Edmonds is balling out in Miami. And guys, and we can go back to multitudes of names as you can name with it, John, and just yeah. say guys that have left here have gone on and been and been absolutely fab- fabulous at other places. So and then players that come here, it seems like they either get hurt or something's bothering them. We don't yeah. need that. And that's the sad part. It is sad. I'll tell you what else is sad. My underdog fantasy scorecard tonight. Uh, I, I picked a big week and mm. a big day for Trey McBride. His over under, his higher or lower, I should say, did not cash out. Hope you had more luck than I did using that promo code PHNX with underdog fantasy because they're going to double your first deposit up to $100. And here's the good thing. Tonight, Maybe it was a bust for you. You can rebound tomorrow. Bet on Underdog Fantasy every single day. Draft with your buddies up to five NFL players, um, six NBA players, which is great, and there are no positional limits. NBA season is in full swing, and you can get all the best hires and lowers on Underdog Fantasy. Again, PHNX is the promo code, and it's going to net you a free 100. If you deposit 100, they're going to match any amount up to $100 on Underdog Fantasy Great stuff. And again, it's a, it's a banger year for unders. This is the most unders that have hit in Vegas, I believe, in two decades. So the offense is on the decline, which tells me underdog fantasy is where you need to be making some money on the unders. Uh, and um, yeah, it's a it's a good time. Even if you're an Arizona Cardinal fan, there is money to be had. And speaking of fun to be had, you can go to gophnx.com and become a diehard. What does that mean? Well, for just under 60 bucks, you get exclusive access, discounts to events, a free t-shirt, 20% off uh, future deals. You get to hang out in the member discord with myself, Bo Brock, vent about this team, become a diehard, separate yourself, sign up uh, at gophnx.com. You will not be sad that you did, Bo. We're getting so many positive people giving us quality feedback on gophnx.com for the yeah. other dollar, or excuse me, the diehard program. Absolutely. Yeah. You can unlock all the work of Howard Balzer yep. and then we're going to have some other work that you're going to want to get access to. And just being a diehard gives you all that access and more, including get this nice swag at the yep. phnxlocker.com, the hats, and also be aware uh, upcoming, you know, specials going on. I can't give too much insight on that, but yeah. we, you know, there's, with the Cardinals being four and seven, I'll just say this: this is going to be the spot that you want to want to come to each and every day because we're not just going to try to fluff up what's going on and try to, you know, serve you some crap of why you should be interested in the Chargers game on Sunday or why going in the bye is going to be the fix all for this Arizona Cardinals team. We're not going to bullshit you like that. We're not going to piss on your leg and tell you it's raining. We're going to talk about this team and have real conversations, and we're going to take your feedback and where you think this team can improve itself between now and the end of the season and where they need to be looking forward to as far as coaching moves, roster moves, you know, upstairs in the front office. I mean, this this is where it's going to be, and we're not just going to be towing the company line trying to say what we think will appease the Cardinals. I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to tow the line with this. Sean Payton watch is back in full (laughs) effect. Cliff Kingsbury, now the loser of one straight, embarrassing fashion on national TV. Sean Payton Watch is back on. Thank you, Frankie, for that super chat. Quickly, I'll get to it. But Sean Payton Watch, look out because he's available. He was talking about Kyler Murray today on Colin Cowherd's show, The Herd. Unprompted, you love to see it. You also love to see 
Frankie Romero, $10 Super Chat, just saying, appreciate the coverage. Hope everyone at PHNX has a great Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Frank. Yeah, yeah man. I appreciate you, my man. Thank you, bro. Um, it's, it's, this is where well. you come for Cardinal Therapy. Mm -hmm. We were hoping for a playoff season. Talk it we're out. not going to get that. Better it, Thanksgiving it looks like. meal. The turkey would have been better. Yes. Now they the Cardinals look like a big fat turkey. But what do you think happens, Bo? Do they, do does Cliff Kingsbury does he does he keep his job for the rest of the season? <laughs> That's my question for you. You know, you're hearing from uh, <laughs> just a couple people around the organization, just seeing how they operate, seeing on hard knocks the up close personal relationship that <laughs> Bidwell has with Kime, and, and the reports are that the the relationship with you know Bidwell watching film with the head coaches it seems like it, it's a tight group that yeah. isn't going to be messed with between now and the end of the season i agree I know with that's that. probably not what people want to hear but you know i'm not going off of what our opinions are i'm going off of what you know it looks like and how this organization operates i mean michael bidwell since taking over for his late father bill bidwell he hasn't been one to pull the trigger on firing a coach mid-season they, they fired mccoy who was a coordinator a couple of years ago mid-season and then wilkes at the end of the year i just don't think that they'll do that it's gonna be interesting to see, man. I, I uh, at at some moment you have to look at the term of the contract, and I think we've all done that. We've looked at all that, and we still question why you signed all those guys for whatever purpose it is. But we got to go with this statement that the Super Bowl being here, you solidify the guys that you want here. And I think you know we got to give Mike maybe the idea that there's a vision that's bigger than just this one year that's at the stake because we got a young team, and in the young team mentality, we want to develop guys, and now we got guys to develop. It's, it, is, it's, it is as if we was hoping that the guys that we had in our locker room was going to come back and repeat and try to get another run. We were 8-0, and 9-1. Oh, and, yeah. and then the wheels fell off and then the, the sails came off the boat. And so then we just got stagnant. And so the idea is that you thought we can run it back, and we didn't by adding a couple more pieces, and we didn't. So Cliff gets a pass for this year. I think he does, and that's, that's just why I think it will be. Uh, it could get ugly and really, really ugly, and it's going to take – the guys in the chat and people around the, around the country to continually promote that that energy of firing Cliff that's out there, and maybe some college team comes along and says, "Hey, man, we'll give you eleven million dollars a year to come coach us in college." And he says, "I'm out of here," and I and I'll, I'll just go back to the college ranks, and that might be on the table. But for right now, I just don't see him getting fired. Guys, football is a difficult sport, and one thing that I don't like about the narrative that we jump into sometimes is yeah. that. We need ideal and perfect circumstances for an individual or a coach to flourish. Yep. Right. That's not the case in the National Football League. And people get hurt. It's your ability to adjust. I mean, we see it all over the mm -hmm. league. It's week you know, 10, and 10, 11. You have to find ways to win. And I think it's, it's more so a situation you know, w with Cliff where it's a law of diminishing return. You know, they need leadership and they need – you know, growth that that the coach, you know, in terms of the, the the coach and play calling, and at the quarterback position, and I'm just not sure. I'm not ne I'm not necessarily ready to write you know Cliff off, but I'm just saying these are big questions that need to be asked. Absolutely, and that's, and that's where you want to see progression at with this team when you've heavily invested in that side of the football, and that was the reason Johnny that they brought him here. Yeah, Trevor makes a good point. Thank you for the 4.99 super chat, my guy. We might lose every game. From here on out, more reason to fire Cliff and Kime. Sucks we uh, won't make it to a third straight team to play in a home Super Bowl. And that is frustrating because that's what the team kind of sold us on in the offseason. Hey, it's our turn now. But then the moves <clears throat> in the offseason, gentlemen, didn't really reflect that. Correct. It reflected a team that attempted to run it back after starting 8-0 last year, 10-2. and And so, I mean, actions speak louder than words. That's why I would caution everybody. If if you're assuming Kyler's going to play this weekend, until I see him not on that inactives list, I, I just I'm I'm tempted to lean with the national media who are saying it's a potential three week injury, and then I'm with Bo. I I just I don't think Michael Bidwell wants to be embarrassed on Hard Knocks, and I don't think he wants to go through the drama that would come hand in hand with firing Cliff Kingsbury, eventually firing Steve Kime. I think when the when the story is done on Hard Knocks, then those decisions will be made. They're going to let the chips fall where they may, and uh, we'll go from there. But we're going to be covering it here on PHNX, PHNX Cardinals every single day. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave us a five-star wherever you get your podcast. We are back tomorrow, breaking it all down. This guy, Bo Brock, is going to be talking with Cliff Kingsbury on where this team goes from here, who may be healthy, 
or not against the Chargers. But in the meantime, subscribe to us at PHNX Sports on YouTube. Like this video. Spread it around the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> help out your boy. Help out the crew. For Damian Anderson, Frank Sanders, Bo Brock, I'm Johnny Venerable. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.